Welcome to Gospel Truth with Andrew Womack, a teaching ministry that focuses on God's unconditional love and grace. I asked the Lord, why should I go here? Why should I go to Karis Bible College? Why should I travel 5,000 miles? And it was like, being here is the real deal. This is where you're supposed to be. If you want to come here, you're going to learn what the Word says and what the Word means. <laughs> and now, here's Andrew. Welcome to our Friday's broadcast of The Gospel Truth. Today I'm ending a series. It's only been two weeks long. I could have gone much longer, but I've been teaching on discipleship, the path to freedom. There's actually six hour-long teachings in here, so this is an abbreviated version that I've been doing. But I tell you, it's been powerful. I really believe that a lack of understanding that Jesus wanted us to disciple people, not just tell people about Him and have them pray a prayer so they could go to heaven, but He wanted us to teach them to observe all things. This is what Matthew chapter 28, verses 19 through 20, this is often called the Great Commission. It says, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. Jesus told us to make disciples, to teach them to observe everything He said. And today we have lots of people, many, many people, that claim to be Christian. I've heard as much as 68% of the United States population claims to be Christian, but of course, many of them are just Christian in name only because they were raised in a country that has in God we trust on our coins. But I doubt that the number of true believers is much over 40%. Matter of fact, George Barna has a way of trying to distinguish between people who just claim Christianity and people that reflect a real relationship with the Lord. And I think his number is closer to 38%. But even of those 38%, I believe that those might be the ones who are actual converts and that they are truly born again and they are on their way to heaven. But out of that 38%, it is a fraction of that. I would be surprised if it's over 10%, probably even less than that, who are disciples. And I know the things I'm saying right here may be shocking some of you. If you haven't been listening to these programs, I've tried to explain this, that the Lord told us to make disciples, teach them to observe everything. And the reason that we have so many problems and immorality on the rise and ungodliness just from every angle is because we have a lot of people who claim the name of Christianity and some of them truly are converts, but they aren't disciples. A disciple is a person who continues in the Word until they know it, they experience that truth, and then that truth sets them free. A person who claims to be a disciple and yet they're in bondage, they can't reproduce their faith, they're defeated, they're discouraged, they're sick, they're poor, they're angry, they're bitter, they may be a convert, but they aren't a disciple. And I tell you, that's not what Jesus called us to do. So I've been teaching all of this week about how that the Lord called us to be disciples. You know, I want to play a little video for you, and this is about a woman named Dottie Heyman. And I remember Dottie when she came to our Bible school. She was from the Holler in Virginia. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm pretty country myself. I've had people mock me and laugh about how, uh, you know, country I am, but Dottie makes me look like I'm posh. I mean, this woman was a country girl. She used to take her um, rifle and go out and be gone for days at a time and hunt and get her food and stuff, and that's how she fed her family. I mean, this lady was from the holler of Virginia, and yet she came here and she got hold of the Word of God. And now, I forget the exact number of years, but I think it's around 12 years that Dottie has been in Kenya. She went to Kenya with $500 in her pocket, and she has never been home, and she has adopted children. She feeds widows. And, uh, you know, Dottie had a situation where I've, I've been supporting her. I don't support her completely. She's got other people that help her. I'm not the only one. But uh, I've supported her, and so she wrote me a letter 
TALKING ABOUT ALL THAT SHE WAS DOING, AND THEY WERE GOING TO SELL THE HOUSE THAT SHE WAS IN. AND I THINK SHE HAS AROUND 12 uh, CHILDREN THAT SHE'S ADOPTED, PLUS SHE FEEDS uh, DOZENS AND DOZENS OF WIDOWS AND JUST DOES A LOT OF THINGS OVER THERE. SO SHE WAS GOING TO LOSE HER HOME, AND SHE COULDN'T JUST GO REPRODUCE THIS HOME. IT WAS A BIG HOME. IT WAS NICE, HAD A YARD. AND SO SHE ASKED ME TO PRAY ABOUT IT. I GOT UP AND READ HER LETTER TO OUR CARIS BIBLE COLLEGE STUDENTS, AND WE RECEIVED AN OFFERING FOR HER, AND SHE NEEDED $100,000 TO BE ABLE TO BUY THIS HOUSE. AND uh, THEY TOOK UP, I THINK IT WAS AROUND twenty-five dollars OR $26,000 IN THAT ONE OFFERING. AND THEN ONE COUPLE IN OUR BIBLE COLLEGE CAME UP AND SAID, YOU KNOW WHAT, WHATEVER THEY DIDN'T COME UP WITH IN THIS OFFERING, WE WANT TO MAKE UP THE DIFFERENCE. SO THE LONG AND THE SHORT OF IT IS SHE WAS ABLE TO BUY THAT HOUSE IN KENYA. SHE NOW OWNS IT. SHE'S BELIEVING GOD TO EVEN BUY MORE HOUSES, TO PUT IN A WELL AND TO DO OTHER THINGS. AND I TELL YOU, I AM JUST SO PROUD OF Dottie. WE WENT OVER THERE, AND JAMIE SENT PRESENTS. AND uh, WE'VE GOT A LITTLE PICTURE OF ONE OF THE BOYS PUTTING ON THE BOOTS. HE WANTED BOOTS LIKE MINE, AND SO WE BOUGHT HIM A PAIR OF BOOTS. AND I TELL YOU, I AM JUST SO THRILLED WITH WHAT GOD HAS DONE IN HER LIFE. SHE IS MAKING DISCIPLES. SHE IS RAISING PEOPLE UP. SHE HERSELF IS A DISCIPLE, AND THIS IS WHAT IT'S ALL ABOUT. SO WATCH THIS VIDEO ABOUT Dottie HAYMAN IN KENYA, AND I'LL BE BACK AT THE END OF OUR PROGRAM. SINCE 1994, Caris BIBLE COLLEGE HAS FOCUSED ON ONE OBJECTIVE, CHANGING LIVES. STARTING WITH A FEW STUDENTS AND A HUMBLE BUILDING IN COLORADO SPRINGS, CBC HAS GROWN EXPONENTIALLY. THROUGHOUT ALL THE GROWTH, HOWEVER, CHANGING LIVES REMAINS THE FOCUS, AND STUDENTS TODAY CONTINUE TO HAVE THEIR MINDS RENEWED BY GOD'S LOVE AND GRACE. STUDENTS LIKE 2002 GRADUATE Dottie HAYMOND. THIS IS HER STORY. GOD TOLD ME in, uh, in, WHEN I WAS 29 YEARS OLD THAT I WOULD HAVE A DAUGHTER. I, I HAD uh, MISCARRIAGE, WHICH WAS VERY HARD ON ME BECAUSE I WANTED THAT GIRL, LITTLE GIRL. I HAD TWO BOYS. I WANTED THAT LITTLE GIRL TO MAKE MY FAMILY. BUT I, I COULDN'T HAVE NO MORE CHILDREN. AND GOD TOLD ME NOT TO CRY THAT HE WOULD GIVE ME A DAUGHTER. LIFE WENT ON. MY HUSBAND PASSED AWAY. And now, and my sons growed up. I never questioned God about that girl. So when I come to Kenya and they offered me this baby girl from the hospital, I, I said, oh, she's welcome here. And he put this baby in my arms, this newborn child in my arms. And God said, this is your daughter. And I just had to lay that little girl down and get on my knees and praise my Lord, because I forgot, forgot about what His promise. I had accepted that I was going to raise children, but I, I never stopped. Here's my little girl. This is the story of Dottie Haymond, a woman who found her destiny after graduating from Karis Bible College in 2003. She followed the call of God and discovered a life of adventure in His plan for her life. I'm from West Virginia. Okay, West Virginia is country people all together and, and a community. You're born there, you're going to live there forever. You're going to die there and be buried there. My father, he was a hard-working man uh, just to raise his family. And my mother, she was very hard on us girls, bringing us up in a good way, a Christian way. My life was raised up going to church on Wednesday night, Sunday night, Sunday morning. Yeah, that was our life. I was afraid of, the, afraid of the devil. I was afraid of God. That's the way we was brought up. God will, God will punish you. He'll throw you away. The devil can have you. That's the way we were taught. And so, so I had the fear of the devil, but I also feared God. I, I wanted to do good, but it, it was hard. 
It was hard to satisfy God. While driving to work in West Virginia, Dottie discovered Andrew Womack on the radio. I was uh, going to work, and every morning I'd listen to him on the radio. 15 minutes, Andrew taught from the Bible. He was just a person, a country, old country boy, like I was old country girl. He explained it in, in the country way. It, it wasn't thou and thee, it was you and me, you know? <laughs> He's very down to earth. Okay, here's this good news. Jesus forgave you one time, and that's for everything. It was hard to sink in, but I loved the concept that I, I can't be perfect all the time. I listened to him probably for about two years. God told me I was going to go to a Bible college. On the way to work this one day on the radio station, after he spoke, he said, in my Bible college, it's ready, it's signing up people. I never knew he had a Bible college. So I called the number, got the, the information. God said, this is the college you're going to. The interview with Andrew was wonderful. They made me feel very welcome. So I went home and I told my brother, you know, and he was against it. My family said, no, you don't need, for two years you're going to leave. You know, I said, yeah, God told me to. So I piled the dogs in the car too, and off we went to Colorado. The teachings that I was receiving was just overwhelming me. I tell you what Andrew uh, taught, I could understand the Bible more the way he taught it. Andrew is just an old country boy, and he teaches you like that. From the start, they said, you're going on a mission trip. Everybody has to go on a mission trip. And they gave us many countries to go to. God said, you're going to Kenya. And I had a wonderful dream. I was going on a trip on this big airplane, and it showed everybody that was going with me in my dream. So I knew I was going to Kenya uh, against my wishes of my brother and my mother. I said, no. I'm getting the money together, I'm going to Kenya. And the trip was wonderful. It was wonderful, it was everything. When I went over that border, I know that this was where God called me. I know that in my heart. So many people was under bondage, a tradition in Kenya. Tradition is killing the people, keeping them from God. You have to do this because this is the way your parents done it. Never in my life did I ever ever see a child I had to do without. The children living in the streets just over, overwhelmed me. And I wanted to take care of every one of them. I just, while I was there, just that one week, I just wanted to love on the children. I wanted to feed them every day, be sure they were fed. And when it was time to leave, I, I had a dream, God said, I'm sending you to Kenya, and you won't be by yourself. You'll never be by yourself. And I, wo I went in, you know, that morning and told everybody my dream, and I said, God said, I'm coming to Kenya. And everybody, you know, <laughs> looking at me funny. <laughs> She'd had a bad dream. But when we was leaving, something in my heart said, you're coming back, you're coming back. That was 2002. After graduating from Kara's Bible College and spending some time at home, Dottie continued to feel God calling her to Kenya. Right from the very first, I knew that Kenya was my destiny. I, so I went to my brother and I said, God told me this morning, time to pack my bags, I'm going to Kenya. And he said, you can't just go to Kenya. How much money have you got? I said, I got enough for my plane ticket and $500. But when I got to Kenya, I said, this is where I belong. I know it was where I belonged. So I came in November, I moved to Bungoma. I completely felt at home here. Then the children started coming. My life here in Kenya is 
preaching God's Word and taking care of children. My Rachel, my firstborn, she's eight years old now. But when I got her, she was a newborn child in the hospital. Her mother had been uh, molested and raped by her stepfather. She's called an incest child. She had left the baby at the hospital. So they gave me that baby. She was three days old. Every child I take has a story. From Andrew being starved to death, to Stevie, whose mother left her, him with his grandmother who couldn't take care of him. God knowed. God told me, I'm not sending you there to, to change Kenya. I'm sending you to change a few lives. So that's my job. Our day starts at five o'clock for the children. We have breakfast and get everybody ready for school. God has always uh, given me time to teach my children about God. I teach them how to pray. They know their little prayers at night. Our life here is finding good schools for my children, keeping them in, uh, in their schools. Everybody in this house knows about Andrew Womack and his wonderful wife, Jamie, because uh, they have always been a part of my life. If you look on my desk, my books I read, Andrew is a big part of uh, the children's upbringing because Andrew inspired me so. They love the DVDs. Uh, and we just got a, a new television, uh, Go TV, where we get once a day, we get to watch Andrew now. So they're inspired by Andrew too. It's already been done. The curse of sin has been broken. Jesus has paid for every person's yeah. sickness. When I was taught how God really was, it changed my life. And I want to teach people the same way that I got taught. I am the most blessed person. And if I hadn't have found Andrew Romick's CBC College, I would have never known my calling. I'd be sitting in West Virginia, never lived my life the way God meant me to do. I'm the happiest person that I, in God's kingdom because he gave me the perfect job. I get a change these children's lives. They're blessed here. And they call me mommy. I'm called mommy because they love me. They say, we got a Mazungu for mommy. <laughs> Mazungu means white person. <laughs> they love it. They love their life. I love my life. God couldn't have given me a better job. I hope to never, never leave one of these children. And I hope to start another home it's because we are run out of space. We need a bigger, another house with another mother that wants the same thing that I want, to fulfill what God had planned for me. We need, I need a helper, one that wants children. <laughs> Dottie's home is currently at capacity. If she were to take in one more child, she would be forced to register as an orphanage in Kenya. She is believing for another mother to open a second house in Kenya so that abandoned children can continue to be adopted. I just want to thank Andrew Warmick and Jamie that they never forgot me. It surprises me. All the people that they have that loves them, and I know they have many, that they kept me in their heart. They are called by God to give and they're given to me that have changed lives of people, of children that'll grow to be people one day that'll change Kenya. Praise the Lord God that I did find my road because I would have never found the happiness that I live to this day. I love helping. I wasn't ever able to help until I came here. People gives to me that's why I can give to other people. I'm not a rich person. I'll never be a rich person. But I keep giving because Jesus said, 
the more you give, the more you're going to get back, and the more you'll be able to give. And so I give all I can give, and I'm, I'm going to keep doing this to the day I die. And you know something? I may never meet the people that gives to me, but I promise them that I'll never waste a cent of their. What they give to me, I thank them. I'll never waste their, their money. It'll be given to somebody in need. Thank y'all. Thank you for giving me the chance to thank you for giving me what I've got. A, a brand new life. <laughs>
This six-part teaching in its entirety is available as a CD or DVD album recorded live from Andrew's 2017 Summer Family Bible Conference. Also available is the Discipleship Evangelism 48 Lesson Course. This course is designed so that anyone can reach an unbeliever, disciple a new believer, or grow with others in the Lord. Also available today is the brand new Destiny Stories Volume 3 DVD. Each of the three Destiny Stories volumes contain testimonies of people whose lives were transformed as they pursued God's will. These valuable resources are available for a gift of any amount when you contact us. Or, if you prefer, you can get them as part of the Discipleship Package, which includes the Discipleship Evangelism 48 Lesson Course, Destiny Stories Volumes 1, 2, and 3, in your choice of either the CD or DVD album of Discipleship, The Path to Freedom. This package has a catalog value of $120, but you can get it today for only $85. Also, Andrew would like to make his notes on discipleship available to you as a free gift. Go to awmi.net to download your free digital copy today. You can find out more about Karis Bible College or become a Grace Partner through our website at awmi.net. While there, you can discover more product details and download additional free resources. Or call our helpline Monday through Friday from 4.30 a.m. to 9.30 p.m. Mountain Time at 719-635-1111. To write us, use the address on your screen. We appreciate your generosity and hope to hear from you today. It's a good story, but it doesn't really exist. He doesn't exist. He was God. They would say I believe in myself. The people would give me a blank stare and I'd be like, have you ever heard this? And they say no. The ministry of Andrew Womack and Karis Bible College provides students with the opportunity to share God's love with the world. We went out on the streets of Cologne in Berlin in Germany. We presented dramas and danced on the streets to draw in the people. They see this joy inside of us and that's what draws them to us. After the skit was done, we just run out and we'd start talking. We just invade their lifestyle and just start talking about Jesus. Bible College. Discover your destiny. Prepare to live it.